And I'll tell you, how can the Japanese believe anything David Stinkins has to say when he's shown how he feels toward Asians on Church Avenue? I'd throw him and his white scarf the hell out of Tokyo. <laughs> <sighs> you know, how do you like his, these announcements that are on the, the radio every week now about safe cities, safe streets, and how crime has improved? Yeah, he didn't tell that to Bonnie Beer. Exactly. He, did he tell that to Luis Ortiz? Right. Who was killed uh, by a gunshot from four thugs? Mm-hmm. You see these advertisements they have on the radio now about how the subways have improved and <laughs> we know what you think of us? Well, now they know why we think of them that way. It's nothing but propaganda from professional liars. That's exactly. And, uh, you know, when they, um, that uh, holdup at the bank occurred in Midtown recently where that hostage was shot, Yeah. I once again, that. David Dinkins said, there's too many guns in New York City. He can't blame it on the thugs. Yeah. You want to know something, John? I have a good campaign theme. Guns don't kill people, youths do. <laughs> right. Yeah, youths, that's right. Thank you very much, John. We oh. got a lot of commercials okay. here tonight. Appreciate the Thank call. You. Listen to this, you youths. A of poison left on the air. Hello, John. I, that won't be very hard, Jay, because Did you hear he didn't him? say anything. <laughs> I don't, I don't, no, I think, I think I know what he meant, but yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he was happy about what happened. Yeah, well... This is a guy that used to call up here, pretend he was a nice mm -hmm. guy, then he went away, and, uh, well, it's you take it, you know, Grandma said, take it from whom it comes. Right. And ladies and gentlemen, I would advise you follow the same advice. Take it from whom it comes. That wasn't too much, so don't take it for too much. Well, it's, it's funny that uh, you say that he was happy about uh, what happened today, Jay. Let's take a look at the litany of people, just a few who may be happy at what happened today, and then we'll see that you're not too far off the wall as that, that insipid caller early in the program accused you of being when uh, you were outraged and said that we should be taking strong steps. Look who's happy today. Louis Farrakhan, Ramsey Clark, Alton Maddox, Leonard Jeffries, Sister Soldier, Ice-T. Jesse Jackson, the SDS from the 1960s, those bomb throwers, the America-hating racist Black Panthers, the Berrigan brothers, that uh, child molester, Peter Yarrow, who threw a party for another America-hater, Daniel Ortega, Abby Hoffman, if he was still alive. But in truth, you don't know. I, well, I, no one despises Abby Hoffman more than I, but you don't know that all these people are really happy. But you could take a good doggone guess. Well, some of them might be, but I don't, you know, it, it might not be right to say that they would be happy if you don't know for sure. Some of them might not, you know, a person's political, political leanings might, I think you can understand that a person still might have mercy, mercy on innocent people. These are people who have done nothing but criticize the United States and blame the United States every time an incident has occurred, like that insipid caller who called a couple of minutes ago. Everything is the fault of the United States well, government. Well, of course, I know that. Let's agree. Let's say some of them would probably be yeah. happy. Uh, by the way, it was uh, great to hear the return of the great Frank on the Jay Diamond Show. It was and, a uh, great privilege. Yeah. And you know that, that caller that called before, Kevin? I have to laugh at the attitude of these people, Jay. Just because he knows the guy, <laughs> he, does that mean that you can't respond to him as a caller in kind when that caller is obnoxious? John, I think he was the guy from yesterday. Could be. Yeah, I think he was the same guy. I, I, I have a pretty good ear. And my guess is that that was Tim from yesterday. In uh -huh. which case, uh, not only should he eat it, but I advise him to sit on it. But I think he sounds like he, he sits on it a lot. He doesn't <laughs> need my help. Yeah, <laughs> And, uh, they, you know, that caller who called you and accused you of wanting to create a police state earlier. I'll tell you, Jay, anyone who's a liberal is already living in a police state in their own mind. You're, that's very profound. Now, that is good. Very good. Well, that's right. They, they do. They make their yeah. own prison. If they dare to stray from their doctrinaire philosophy, look how they're come down upon. If it's the women's lib group, oh, that woman just doesn't know what she's talking about. If they don't follow the... That uh, philosophy. You know, the, the, the interesting thing is, I, I think you're right. Some of the people that you mentioned, I would guess, are happy in the, uh, in the innermost recesses of what passes for their minds. But they're, they're foolish because they might have been in that building, too. Mm hmm Well, you that see? doesn't cross their minds. I mean, they're, they're so uh, wrapped up in their America, their hatred of America, that they never think of these things. 
And, Jay, I recorded that great tribute to the police last night, and it should be available throughout this country. As you know, I missed it the first time around. Well, but, that's uh, why I played it again. Yeah. So you I would get it. I don't understand these callers who call up and say, Jay, is there any way we can get a copy of it? <laughs> who in 1993 doesn't have something to record no, from their radio They on? might not know when it was going to be. Don't you see what I mean? They but might you not... announced it for a half an hour before. Oh, yeah, that's true. I forgot that. Yeah, I did. Even more than a half hour. Yeah, you're right. I don't understand these yeah, You have to understand something. Not everybody is John from Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody is, is ready at a moment's notice to press the button. <laughs> Some people are... You see, that's the trouble with gods. Mm. They got, Sometimes, you know, the, the Greek gods used to think that mere mortals were godlike, too. So that's why John from Staten Island thinks that every other listener is like he is, <laughs> ready at a moment's notice to document history. <laughs> well, the first release of that tape, Jay, should be sent to David Dinkins. You know, that's a good idea. You know something, John? I have a feeling that if those terrorists... If you happen to be walking in Lower Manhattan today and had caught those terrorists doing, setting about their nefarious work, there would have been a few ex, there would have been a few ex-terrorists leave. He speak to a live, flesh and blood human being, being a sensate man, a man of intellect and passion, a man who served this country in the past and continues to serve it in the future. Many of you detest the fact that I pay homage to him and pay tribute to him every time he calls the Jay Diamond program on WABC, but I welcome your derision, I welcome your hatred, if it means that I can pay homage to a broadcasting legend in his own right, a great American and a great citizen of the world, yes, you guessed it, John from Staten Island. Hello, John. Jay, thanks very much for that. Hey, we must be doing something right if those lefties are upset. <laughs> you know, Jay, you don't have to explain your, out after your outrage at what happened last Friday. Anyone who's a real American knew exactly what you felt. We can't help it if some people can't think of more than one thing at, at a time. Where is it written that at the same time you're praising the way the, that people acted, the way that the police and the EMS people handle things, that you can't be angry at those who were responsible for possibly killing as many Americans in one terrorist action as were killed during the 10-year war in Vietnam if that tower had collapsed. Well, some people appreciate social distortion. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. But you see, Jay, the, those who are always looking to blame America first don't want to talk about America being the victim. But they have volumes to speak in criticism of the United States when we respond to terrorism with an airstrike against a woman and baby killer like Omar Gaddafi and a couple of his bodyguards are knocked off. Where are those types lamenting the loss of five of their fellow innocent civilians? They're nowhere to be found because they're usually joining the anti-American bomb throwers, if not by action, certainly by spirit. And you know, the, the bomb throwing always comes from the enemies of the United States and the revolutionary left here in the United States. The SDS of the 1960s, the Black Panthers, the left-wing miscreants who destroy certain buildings on college campuses. You know the type. I certainly do, and I know that they are embittered, hate-filled people, losers in life and total misfits who hate the world. And we know what you're talking about when you speak of those miscreants in the street. And have you noticed, Jay, that suddenly David Dinkins is praising the police and firemen? I think there's an election coming sometime. And Cuomo, you know, if it wasn't for the 1980s, he wouldn't have anything positive on his record. <laughs> That's right. The only time this city and this state boomed was in the mid-1980s. And rather than give Ronald Reagan credit, he said that it was, quote, in spite of Reaganomics. <laughs> you see how sneaky these people are? You have to watch them all the time. Well, and as a gag out at the Rio Diner Saturday, Bob, at, you know, made believe I was Cuomo, and he says, uh, what is your feelings about, what are your feelings, Governor Il Supremo, or Swachim in Albany, about what happened yesterday? And I said to him, I said, Bob, we have to ask ourselves as a nation, Bob, what we did wrong. <laughs> what, how we, where we went wrong to inspire good people to do this to us. <laughs> Isn't that typical? We have to examine our motives and examine ourselves with introspection, Bob, as the great philosophers would, and come up with the reason how we encourage the wrath of otherwise peace-loving people to do this to us. Excuse me, pe peace-loving peoples. 
<laughs> you notice how leftists yeah. always say yeah. the peoples of the world? Yes. They uh, don't say people, they say people. Divisive. Yeah, divisive. And remember the famous one, again and again <laughs> and again. I certainly do, Ollie. Thank you. Thank you, John. Goodbye. Uh, oh, see, I cut him off too soon. I didn't know there was... What? You, you trick, tripped me up, John. I didn't know there was anything after the thank you. Eli, this is Jay Dunn. The governor of the state of New York, Mario M. Cuomo. Governor, I know that you had some salient words uh, last Saturday at the news conference. You said that if it looks like a bomb and smells like a bomb, it is a bomb. And uh, right now, I think the people of New York State are waiting to hear from you. Uh, what is your appraisal? of the individual or and uh, actually the the individuals who wrought this terror on an unwary new york populace jay i think we have to ask ourselves i think we have to look at it from the other side i think we have to wonder why this could happen to us in order so that it doesn't happen again we have to ask ourselves what was it what did we do what did we do to engender such a ferocity, such a hatred in the heart of a human being who really is no different than we are? I'm sure he shares our values. In fact, I'm sure he's better than we are. At least I know he's better than you are. And I know he's better than your listeners are. He might not be as better than I am. I have a more philosophical bent. Ever since somebody told me to get bent, I, uh, I'm a more philosophical guy since that day. And uh, I can tell you, that we have to search our own souls. We must not fall prey to the, to the uh, temptation to, to condemn others when we don't understand their feelings and, and their frustrations. Well, what about our frustrations? What about the frustrations on the part of, of Americans who were frightened by this, who were made to feel, who were made to feel in danger, uh, who were made to feel susceptible to an attack at any time of the day or night? What about those children, the four or five school classes filled with children, hundreds of children who were in that building, whose lives were put in peril and whose, whose future emotional stability have been put in peril, perhaps in perpetuity. What about, what about those people, Governor? Of course we have to think of those people, but we also have to think of the people living out there in Jersey City, who, who are now worried that there'll be recriminations against them, uh, who will now not be able to pursue their own avocations and their own goals. Don't forget, we see ourselves as good, but the world doesn't. They see us as evil. In their minds, in the minds of the, the terrorists, I don't want to call them terrorists, in, in the minds of the, uh, the opposition, they, uh, they have a different opinion, a different view of the world. Who are we to say our view is superior to theirs? Because under a merciful providence, under a divine influence, we're all the same. We're all brothers. You know that, because I believe in brotherhood. I don't believe that my ideas are necessarily better ideas than someone else. That would be, that would be taking the moral uh, prerogative. And I don't feel that I can take the moral prerogative. And if I can't take it, certainly you can't. You're right, Governor, I can't take it. But, uh, Governor, what do you personally, never mind the broad philosophical objectives of the individuals who perpetrated this, this crime, you mustn't characterize it as a crime before they've been convicted. They haven't been convicted of anything yet. They might have been extenuating circumstances. Perhaps the building offended their, their sense of uh, equilibrium. Perhaps the building uh, affected their sense of uh, aesthetics. That's it, aesthetics. Uh, well, Governor, let's talk about the specific individuals. Why would an individual, regardless of his political philosophy, his ideology, why would he do such a dastardly act? Jay, all over our cities. Now, Jersey City is no exception. We have individuals who are under great stress because they lack proper self-esteem. It's my feeling that the individuals who did this, Al Salama Salama and uh, his partner and whomever else was involved, it's obvious if we, if we could sit down as reasonable men and analyze this and interview them, we'd see that as I'm certain that all of the people involved in this, this, uh, this act of violence, and it was violent, I'm not gonna say it wasn't violent, it was violent, oh, you'll concede as much that it was violent. Absolutely, it was a violent act. But we have to look for the root causes of the violence, and I'm saying that the root causes of the violence can be traced back to a definite lack of self-esteem on the part of the individuals who perpetrated this act. 
Oh, lack of self, really? Uh, oh. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor, for coming in tonight. Don't mention it. Uh, where are my bodyguards? I have to get a, oh. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Governor. All right, let's say uh, hello to uh, Joe. When one is right, one need not have any fear, and in fact, one ought not to have any fear. Well, I understand that, and that's why I feel we're right as a nation, and we should press our advantage morally and, and uh, militarily, and we should expunge our enemies, certainly from our country and hopefully from the world. Now, well, wait a minute now. Who is to judge? Who is qualified to judge what person is the enemy of another person? Well, wait a minute now. My enemy may not be your enemy. I thought that we're, as American citizens, we share the same enemies. I, I don't want to get into that now. Well, Mr. Mayor, why do you suppose the individuals that did this, the specific individuals, were moved to do it? Yea, in a lot of our urban centers, including Jersey City, as well managed as it is, our citizenry is afflicted by despair. The reason for this was despair. Uh, these individuals were obviously despairing, as so many New Yorkers and so many Los Angelinos were despairing last year and no doubt will be despairing this year if the trials go against them, even if they go for them, because they may be despairing out of joy. One can despair for so many reasons. Bye. This is a... Hey, John from Staten Island. Yeah, thank you. Jay, you're sounding great tonight. When you're angry, you're your best. <laughs> I like it. You know, Jay, another phony has been exposed on your show. If you recur last week, but if the warm, mischievous misfit, Greg, that black guy who always calls you and said, there's bears dreaming bears in the Middle East, uh, and uh, saying that they're better to get us. They're doing their things, he says. Uh, I know... It'll, it won't turn out to be a terrorist attack or something like that. Right, right. That? So there's another guy you know you can't believe when he tells you he knows everyone and what's going on. Wait, I want to talk to the audience for a moment. Don't go, John. You see, audience, those of you who are plotting and scheming and trying to get by on me, you might put one by me, you might throw a slider by me hard on the outside corner. But John from Staten Island is watching me take my cuts and telling me what happens after I get back to the dugout. That's right. <laughs> and anyone who doubts me, I've got the call ready. You're right to go here on another tape in case they wanted to hear this joker. You, you nailed him. But you know, Jay, what was so painfully obvious about this, uh, this case is the fact that this guy felt cocky and confident enough to uh, not only stay in this country after attempting to kill 50,000 Americans, but go about his everyday business with impunity. I think this is a testimony that the word has spread even amongst our foreign enemies that there's a good chance you can get away with the most heinous crime in this country. Especially with regard to that mosque out in Jersey City where they already have gotten away with murder, and I'm certain John laughed about it. Uh, yes, I'm The sure. fact that he got away with killing Kahana pumped these people up to the extent that they could to go think about doing what they did last Friday. That gave them the psychological strength. They gave them the, the impetus to plan and execute this, this terrorist mission. That's right. Maybe they're lashing a little bit less tonight, Jay. Had El Saeed Nosser been strung up from the first lamppost upside down and then shot and stabbed 6,000 times, then I assure you this would not have happened. Mm -hmm. But they were, they were inflated with their victory, with their triumph, over American justice two years ago, and they just simply never, they laugh at us. People don't, you know, all you good little people in America, you know, you go to church, and uh, you, you, uh, you believe people when they tell you what's good and what's bad. The other people in the world are, there's a lot of bad people who laugh at the fact that you're good and play by the rules. You know, that's a good idea. You know something, John? I have a feeling that if those terrorists, if you happen to be walking in Lower Manhattan today and had caught those terrorists doing, setting about their nefarious work, there would have been a few ex, there would have been a few ex-terrorists leaving. For this latest outrage. Sure, they see a lot of people getting away with murder in this country. Yonko Rosenbaum is a perfect case. And to all of those J. Edgar Hoover haters who are trying to belittle his great legacy like they're trying to destroy everything else that made this country great and safe, they should be on their knees thanking him tonight for building the greatest law enforcement agency in the world. But since so many of them are enemies of the United States themselves, 
they probably hate J. Edgar Hoover even more tonight. And David Dinkins is probably one of those who hates J. Edgar Hoover. But when he thought he could look good politically in the rapture of the capture, he was full of praise for law enforcement, whom he, <laughs> he usually vilifies. Did you see him tonight? Mm -hmm. And by the way, Jay, I have to laugh at the way the he big announcement... Yeah. Excuse me? No, he wore a tuxedo tonight. Well, it's better than that stupid fire hat. <laughs> yeah, nice. He could have worn that to cover his whole body. I have to laugh at the way the, the big announcement is made that Dinkins, Homer, and Andrew Stein won't be marching in the St. Patrick's Day parade. Like, we're supposed to be upset about it and feel punished. In their arrogance <laughs> and, and their self-importance, they still they haven't figured it out that we'd rather not see their insipid mugs anywhere. And, uh, John, I, I understand that Rudolph Giuliani will march in the Hibernian St. Patrick's Day Parade. Did yes. you know that? Some politicians still have guts. And you watch, Jay. Dr. M.T. Mehdi <laughs> is going to come out of the woodwork and defend this killer. <laughs> you watch what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> incisive, salient, Morden's commentary from the Wizard of Richmond, John of Staten Island. Thank you. Thank you. Attention, frequent heartburn sufferers. Mayor Posner is an internationalist criminal of war, and it is a disgrace that this propagandist lackey, this ideological hyena, this political criminal who supported and was paid for by the worst group of thugs, brigands, and outlaws, murderers, torturers, and outright homicidal maniacs to ever rule in this century was allowed to come on this station and spew his propagandist outrage. Vladimir Posner was a paid mouthpiece for the Soviet Union. Vladimir Posner's opinion means absolutely nothing. Vladimir Posner is an internationalist criminal of war. He's no different from those running around in Argentina who claim that they were only following orders under the Nazi regime. Vladimir Posner must be tried by an international people's tribunal made up of those whose countries was ruled, raped, and ravaged by his masters in the Kremlin. He can only be judged by those whom he helped oppress because he worked for that system. And you know, Jay, here this man is brought into this country. You know, the Nazis after the war escaped through the Odessa network. It's obvious that the liberals like Phil Donahue are running a hammer and sickle network, financing these thugs to come to this country, trying to clean up their act, trying to make them seem as if, well, they couldn't help it. They, they were just part of that system and suddenly they found religion and renounced it. It's obvious that Phil Donahue, by propagating this criminal, is part of the liberal hammer and sickle network, a fifth column within this country, within the media. Phil Donahue's support of Vladimir Posner, an international criminal of war, proves what the late, great fighting Joe McCarthy said, God bless him. Scratch a liberal, they're just another shade of pink. Thank you. Well, Frank, don't go yet. Yes. Are you still there? Yes. Well, you know, your uh, appearance on Curtis and Lisa's show the other day was to great acclaim. Really? Well, are you kidding? Why, it's still reverberating around the halls up here on the 17th floor of WABC. Wow. The, the, the aura of vintage Frank has not yet faded from these hallowed halls. Well, it, it was an honor and a, and a privilege to be up there, Jay, and it was, it was uh, great to meet Curtis and his uh, uh, colleague at the flanker microphone to his right, Steady. Lynn Samuels. <laughs> well, Frank, I'm so, I was so jealous that I was thinking maybe inviting you up some night to do my show with me. Gladly, Jay. Maybe we could get John from Staten Island to come up the same night. John from Staten Island is a one-man radio commando. Drop him behind the lines at a liberal talk show, and he can wreak havoc on the opposition. And Frank, with you, me, and John in the studio at the same time in a pair of dice, we could have a high old time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on W... Cut it more there's no danger now there's no there's no war in in yugoslavia there's no problems in taiwan or north korean nuclear bombs let them worry about nuclear weapons we should get rid of ours 
Uh, we should get rid of ours unilaterally. Let the other nations blow themselves up. They won't hurt us. Robert Abrams. You know, 50,000 volts. I don't understand that taser because I had a fuse blow. A free okay, ride, Tom. Okay, um, okay. I can't do the imitation of you that uh, Bob has perfected, Tom. Um, well, he hasn't. He hasn't perfected it in any. Uh, he talks okay. like this whenever you're on, Tom. This is Tom. Uh, wait a minute now. Let me let me say what I'm saying, okay? Please, you're democratic at least, Jay. No, I learned everything I know from Bob. Well, that's bad. Besides, he's gonna. I mean, uh, that what's that? But you yourself, steady, are democratic. steady, Tom. Huh? You're working on thin ice. Uh, Bob will review all these tapes right, when he comes right. back. I, I doubt what when he finds yours, he's going to get the cassette and jump up and down. Probably, on it. probably. You'll hear it on the best of Grant. Yeah, I will maybe. Hello, hello. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I just like to say this: all the individuals that ha have come into this country, it goes back to the nuts and bolts days of the uh, of the of the Contras, probably, and the drug thinks and. They brought them here to sell drugs, and there's an undercurrent of the government of the, in the USA that p had promoted that. Thank you, Tom. Let's say hello to David on W. Jay, I don't know if you saw this. Said friend, so I... Frank, ladies and gentlemen, vintage Frank. Jay, I don't know if you read the Times a couple of days ago in the uh, national section. They had an article, uh, Campus Journal, about in the People's Republic of Berkeley, California... They're teaching uh, the Sioux language to uh, students there to get the uh, viewpoint of the Lakota Indian Sioux. And what's really, really sick about this, Jay, is uh, they were teaching uh, the language, the word washichu, which means fat, greedy person, which is the Sioux word for white people. <laughs> and they said no one in the class got uh, upset over this or thought it was a slander because they felt they had to atone for uh, <laughs> their ancestors' guilt. In fact, one uh, naive uh, student said that, I think you would be insane if you weren't disgusted by Western ideals. Well, Jay, I'm not disgusted by Western ideals. I'm damn proud of Western ideals. And I'm damn proud of Western history. And I feel no guilt and I feel no need for atonement. And, I, and this is part and parcel of the leftist campaign to literally destroy and disrupt the foundations of this society. There's no one out there who is of the white race to have to feel any guilt for anything that someone did in the past. What I'm interested in is how could the Sioux have anticipated hundreds of years ago the birth of Abe Hirschfeld? <laughs> Jay, should the man with the accent on the newspaper... You remember when that jerk ran for... Uh, he ran, for, he ran for everything. Yes, yes, he kept on going for a lower and lower position each time. <laughs> Till he settled for Miami City Councilman. But, you know, getting back to the People's Republic of Berkeley, the People's Republic of Berkeley it was the uh, uh, birthplace of the so-called free speech movement with Mario Stavro and those uh, of his ilk of almost, I guess, 30 years ago. And isn't it strange how they've mutated into the most proto-fascist, crypto-fascist, uh, neo-Nazi totalitarian individuals they are the ones who've mutated into the politically correct movement who who dare who tell you what you should think and what you sh should say isn't it amazing Jay how those who years ago claimed to be the victims of oppression when given the slightest chance have become the biggest oppressor themselves and again I say be proud of your heritage you bear no guilt. If we look at the history of this country, it's done more for the benefit of mankind than any country in history. Frank, don't go. Yes, sir. Don't go. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank, if you one day woke up with amnesia... Oh, I'm late. Can you... Hold on. Stay where you are, Frank. Yes. All right? Or like a possum right. on the June bug. <laughs> All right. Stay, stay where you are, like a frog on a lily pad. Stay where you are, and we'll be back on WABC with Vintage Frank. Ow, you stepped in my... I don't know how the word Baydecker originated as a word connoting tour guide, but I want to be your third world Baydecker and introduce you to some multicultural event that happened halfway across the world in a veritable ejaculation of respect for other cultures. Are you with me, Frank?
I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is coming off the uh, AP. This came over a few hours ago, but I saved it. I didn't get a chance to relate it to the people this afternoon. Bear in mind how it, how it clearly elucidates the superior cultures uh, of the non-Western world. From Bangalore, India. At least 16 people have died, and 630 were ill after eating the decomposed meat of animals sacrificed during a Hindu ritual, officials said Friday. About 8,000 devotees ate the meat of 250 sheep and goats last week and began to fall ill on Monday, said Nayaz Ahmad, a superior non-West, I mean a government official. The carcasses were covered with filth and blood and were left outdoors for about 24 hours before being eaten. Worshippers chanted prayers to complete the ritual, which is supposed to prevent natural calamities. Quote, the meat decomposed very fast in the heat. What the people ate was more or less poison, said M. Parashiva Murthy, a government doctor. The ceremony in praise of the Hindu god Kala Devaru is held every 12 years in Yatamabadi about 60 miles south of Bangalore. Let's make a note, Frank. Will you put something down in your date book? Yes. You and I are going to go there in 12 years. And let's sup of the holy, of the holy meal. Yes, Jay. Let us drink of the wisdom of uh, the Maharishi. I want to know, you remember, Jay, when they'd always tell us about bringing the wisdom of the Maharishi and of the East to this country? I want to know, Jay, where's the Maharishi in India? They're killing each other off there left and right like flies. They're blowing up uh, mosques there. Thousands are being murdered. I, I, what, what happened to all the wisdom of the Maharishi? You know, you brought out an excellent point, and I, I think it should be really underscored and brought back again and again that this is a total lie that goes to the basis of the denigration of Western civilization uh, in favor of barbaric and primitive and savage cultures is the absurdity that is, is, is being taught in our schools. And let me say this in closing, Jay, that... You Don't notice, close, Frank. Do you notice how uh, Wilbur Tatum fled this country the moment he was put under the spotlight? <laughs> yeah, he ran away. <laughs> he didn't flee to the third world. He fled to neutral Switzerland where he's probably got gold stored away in some bank, <laughs> knowing he can't be extradited to this country. And Frank, I, yes, whose gold does he have? I, 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 want, I don't know, Jay, probably uh, from the suckers that bought that rag. I mean that paper every week. And, Jay, I really took umbrage at his remarks about you, Bob Grant, and Bob's good friend and colleague, Rush Lumbaugh. That certainly was sneaky, the way he would not come on Bob's show and had to send a tape, and then he, he attacked you and wouldn't come on your show. And that's why he's fled to Switzerland. Uh, Frank, I just want to make one thing clear before you retreat back into the Frank Sanctum. Yes. For a weekend of restorative thought, quiet contemplation. <laughs> um, the, uh, the difference between Western culture and almost all the other cultures is that, to my knowledge, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Frank, your degree of sophistication with regard to anthropology is far greater than mine, so I will defer to you. Uh... The, I think that we are the culture that uniquely has one trait, which is guilt. Uh, I don't know if these Indians ever feel guilty about being Indians, or Hindus feel guilty about being Hindus, but it seems that Western people, particularly Americans, are plagued with guilt. So my feeling is this. To me, it's ironic, because in order to have guilt, you have to kind of think that you have something that someone else doesn't. And if you, if you feel you have something culturally that other people don't, don't you kind of feel superior to the other people? Yes, that's true. So and the guilt is an indication that these people are phonies, that they really feel superior to the other cultures. That, Jay, that is a deduction worthy of Sherlock Holmes in the Scarlet Letter. And with that, I say thank you. Thank you. Learn that socialism is a failure? No, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Thank John. You. Look, look. Uh, sensitivity. Uh, in fact, Alan Alda is winning a a, a a proxy Oscar. He's winning a an honorary Oscar tonight because <laughs> he's so sensitive. He should have gotten a sex change long ago. He did. Because he has the he has the mind of a feminist. Some well, they turned him into a man, but it wasn't a good job. <laughs> 
But, uh, John, you know something? All American true blue red-blooded men are going to win a great victory tonight in about one hour. You know why? Why? Why's that? Because this is my night. <laughs> Go ahead. Make yeah. my night. And speaking, speaking of that great man, Jay, he was not one of those who had one of those insipid red ribbons on. He was not one of the politically correct crowd. Thank God there's a few left in Hollywood, but of course they're all looked upon as freaks hey, and insensitive. I have an idea. How about, how about John from Staten Island and Frank from Queens go to Hollywood? How about that for a movie? That's right. Frank John and Frank in Hollywood. Da 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 da. <laughs> no, no, no. Da, da, da. You guys get off the plane, the two of you carrying a valise. You're going to make talk radio. It's going to be a movie about talk radio. You know, when you're met by the big studio executive. Right this way, John. Right this way, Frank. Oh, hold on. I've got to go get my shake. Oh, hold on. I've got to get my nut burger. <laughs> Jay, I'd rather fly in in gunships with my uh, Smokey the Bear cap on and Flight of the Valkyrie playing. You know, like in, uh, <laughs> with Robert Duvall in, uh, what was it, Apocalypse Now? Yeah, yeah. When he came yeah. flying into the camp? That's the way I'd like to land. Okay. Machine guns blazing. That's you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Won't be long before John and Frank are in this studio with me. We're going to do that special show. Oh, oh John. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John from Staten Island. Thank you. Jay, Andrew is a great caller, a great man, and very funny. I Isn't love he? him. <laughs> and uh, let me also say thanks to the caller, Neil, for his kind words about Frank and I the other night. Now, Jay, your opening remarks about the primitive activities of uh, certain cultures in 1993, like making 13-year-olds bite the heads off snakes. If you recall, Jay, during the war with Iraq, the liberal pundits here back home and the Blame America Firsters kept telling us that we have to understand the minds of the Arabs. No, Jay, there's nothing to understand. If you want to remain in the 16th century in 1993, then you should die with your primitiveness. Let them try to understand the rest of the world which has come into the 20th and 21st century. It's they that uh, continue to wish to remain primitive, and we shouldn't have to try and understand them. And you'll get callers like the insipid Abdullah, who uh, has taken the place of two other callers who have uh, been so duplicitous that they've been banned on so many programs that uh, I guess they're hiring surrogates like uh, Abdullah to do their bidding for them. And he'll call up and talk about what the white man has done to third world peoples and things like that. If you'll recall, Jay, uh, when uh, people from South America and Mexicans would try and sneak across the border in the Rio Grande, they would be helped to a certain point by the Mexicans. Into the desert, 120 degrees, they'd steal all their belongings and leave them to die in the desert of uh, starvation and heat. And the Chinese people were sneaking people into the United States. And then when they'd get them into the United States, they'd say, sorry, pal, you don't have enough money and we're going to hold you and your relatives hostage. And remember they were chaining them to beds until they got the rest of the money from their relatives <laughs> before they would uh, let them loose to uh, run among, among us? without their uh, green cards. This is what third world peoples do to each other. Never mind what white people do to uh, third world peoples. These uh, people of the third world have a, a lot of primitiveness and uh, destructive attitudes towards each other. And if you'll notice, Jay, the other day, Abdullah kept telling you that white people are the only race that run from the sun. They always try and hide. Well, I heard him on Bob's show the other day saying that whites are constantly in the sun trying to get tanned. So this guy is so confused and contradictory, and that's why it's so easy to zap them. <laughs> well, John, uh, can we expect to hear you making an appearance tomorrow morning with Lynn? I... Why, well, who is she sitting in for this time? No, tomorrow morning, Saturday. Oh, no, no. No? No, I will not be calling. I'll be at work. Oh, you're working tomorrow. All yes, right. Yes, I have more important things to do tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's, I'm glad you mentioned work, because there's a contingent of WABC <laughs> hosts who make reference to the fact constantly that you should get a job. Yeah, and I have no life. And right, but you do have a life, and you do have, in fact, you have more than one job. Very active life, Jay. Right, and you have hobbies, you have a computer, right? All, you, I'm working all the time. You help your friends out? I do more work at home, Jay, than I do on the job. That's right, so it's not just broadcasting, you have a lot to do. Yes. Thank you, John. Including keeping the liberals on the run. Thanks, Jay. Thank you very much. Appreciate the call. Thank you.
Yeah. Yeah, John of Staten Island, what do you have to say? Yeah, uh, David, I, I'm still sick and tired of your yeah. whining about how well, blacks have been... Well, don't be another hilly now. Okay, fine. Uh, you blacks in this country have it absolutely made. You, there's 372 black mayors in the United States. Three black Miss Americas out of the last five years of the uh, Miss America contest, yet we still have a black Miss America contest. You've got affirmative action. We permit lies to be taught as legitimate history to make blacks feel better. Uh, we have a national holiday for one man now in the United States and one man only. Oh, we don't Our, have George Washington's birthday? What? We don't have George Washington's birthday? It's not a national holiday yes, anymore. It is. In fact, In fact, Columbus Day has been set aside for Martin Luther King Day in many, in many areas. Arizona was refused the Super Bowl because they wouldn't make Martin Luther King a, um, a national holiday. You had two presidents, the most powerful men in the world, were forced to sign legislation they really didn't want. Because well, that was their own, if, that, if they were forced to sign it, then that was their own failing, wasn't it? No, they were pressured from the black community. And oh, they were you mean to tell me that Reagan and Bush Reagan. actually could take pressure they, from the black community? They did it because the pressure was constantly put on, and they finally caved yeah, in and yeah, yeah, to them. Yeah, John of Staten Island, you mean you to tell me that 12% of the population, which doesn't even vote right. Republican, forced Bush and Reagan to go along that's with that. Well, well, wait, 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 wait fellas, the fellas, fellas, fellas. Well, David... Uh, Mr. Reagan was on record as not approving of that holiday, and yet he signed the bill. Yeah, well, uh, well, that was not to satisfy blacks. It must have been somebody else then. Well, I, I don't think he did it to satisfy Goldwater rights in his own party. Look what? at the look at the excuses that are made for blacks whenever anything goes wrong. When a black politician turns out to be a disaster or a crook, he was quote set up to fail. When brand new buildings that a lot of minorities occupy end up destroyed, it's because the landlords abandoned them. When blacks wait, take wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, you are constantly uh, lumping blacks into one whole group. Now, first of all, what you should say is that poor people. Those I have seen are areas destroyed. I have seen areas destroyed by poor white people. So don't tell me yes, that blacks are the them. only people that destroy areas. Name That's them. So then you go out the then, farm on Long Island and you see what poor whites can do. Then why are blacks always trying to get into white neighborhoods and it's never the other way around? And don't talk to me because about blacks aren't blacks don't fear whites the way whites fear blacks. Because right. white men are always scared that black men are going to end up in their wives or their daughters' beds. Ah, uh, no, now wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's ridiculous. Is that, that's Typical. The, you explained to me before the what's, crime problem what's why, the matter, why, what's white the matter, black, why whites were afraid of blacks. Explain what, that to wait me. David, wait, wait, let you, me, you wait, wait, ease up, fellas, 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 ease up, ease up, ease up. We have to use the Mussolini button now. Uh, bring back David for a moment. Can we have David here? Yeah, I'm still here. You really think that the reason why some whites fear blacks is because they're afraid they have an, uh, an abstract fear that they're going to have sex with their daughters? Can I explain something? Most, let, me, let me tell you something. Most what? white men are afraid that a white man will sleep with their daughters right, or their wives. They're not, not unique to blacks. Can I explain something? No, but let me tell you something. Right. Crime statistics indicate... Oh, that boy. they are... Well, you, you don't like it. No, you, feel, you, you, you sound like you're withering you under the... If you want. All right, David, wait, I... Uh, wait, wait, can I... Wait, because you said it... Why don't you make a little it. speech? I'll give you 20 seconds. All right, I'll explain it. Now, I'm interracial. In this country, we have something called the one-drop rule, which means that if you have a single drop of black blood in you, no matter what your ethnic composition, you're considered black. And when you look at why that system was designed, it was because white men were fooling around with black women, and they did not want any of these children that resulted is that, is there any, all right, that, with their daughters. All right, you sound like a smart guy. Use your imagination. Really apply yourself. Is there, is there any other reason, based on empirical evidence, why a, a white person might be afraid of a black person ever in any circumstance? I, yes, and there's reasons for blacks to what be if, white. What if, I was, what if I was in a, what if I told you I went in a Korean store and four blacks came in at two in the morning and started, with me in the store as the only customer, started threatening the storekeeper that they were going to take this material without paying for it because and the man said it's the law you have to pay and their response was i've never revealed this on the radio yet till now their response was we didn't make no white man's law so we don't have to obey no white man's law hey they were and then they terrorized wait, they terrorized yeah. the man and, and ran yeah. out with the material yeah you mean whites never do that kind of thing either you mean young white men who grow up in these poor areas you mean they never resort to crime and they never no it's because they have no you you are providing these tough guys with the excuse to do the to make the wanton depredations that they do on society and i think you're doing them and yourself a disservice by doing that but thanks for the call just the same terrorists in the community you have not as yet bombed us we don't we must not anticipate in advance what each and every terrorist will do now 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 come on now you ought not 
Listen. You ought not to try to assert that all terrorists will blow up our buildings. Yes. Some might only blow up our automobiles. But, Jay, I, this comes from Elizabeth, Elizabeth Holtzman, who was... Holtzperson. Uh, yeah, Holtzman, who... And I express in my new product, Hooked on Phonies. You can be like Al Sharpton, Calvin Butts, Herbert Daugherty, Sonny Carson, Louis Farragan, Leonard Jeffries, not to mention our female version of Maxine Waters. Be like these people. Absolutely produce nothing except the bab... Who was... Holtzperson. Uh, yeah, Holtzman. Who... And I express in my new product, Hooked on Phonies. You can be like Al Sharpton, Calvin Butts, Herbert Daugherty, Sonny Carson, Louis Farragan, Leonard Jeffries, not to mention our female version of Maxine Waters. Be like these people. Absolutely produce nothing except a babble of negative talk and negative concepts and rabble-rousing, and you too can ascend to the highest heights of media delusions. Jay Diamond. Hi, I'm back after that last commercial. Let's go to Steve. Ciao. Bear in mind, first, one ought to realize that the school board should be a place of diversity. Up till now, we've had human beings on the school board. There's no reason to limit that to human beings. We must invite people from all the, all God's, excuse me, God has no place in the school or in the school. We must invite entities from all of nature. Can I say nature? Yeah, I said you could say nature. All right, Reverend Sharpton assures me that I can use the word nature. Aren't you a reverend? I'm a reverend, all right, but I'm a reverend of nature. I'm not any reverend of God. Oh, okay. I. Yes, yes. All right, Mr. Mayor, continue. Very well, Reverend Sharpton says I can introduce nature. And I may as well tell you that my choice for the, the uh, sex education member, sex education chair on the Board of Education will be Morty Manfred of NAMBLA so as to foster a more intimate relationship. Sex education chair on the Board of Education will be Morty Manfred of NAMLA, so as to foster a more intimate relationship between those who teach and those who learn. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? Well, you're a funny guy, that's all. You're, you're better than most people on the radio. I wish I could say the same for you. And apparently everyone else agrees with me. Well, seems to be so, of late. Hopefully it will. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, who is your other choices? Well, we have always neglected the position of guidance counselor on the Board of Education. Therefore, I am appointing High C and Diamond from the Crips and the Blood, one of each, to share the position of Commissioner of Guidance Counselors. They will guide our youths into productive lives as members of society. My goodness. Uh, they might even become mayor. Well, I've proven anyone can. And Jay, let me announce that in the field of home economics, which is an antiquated field, but not the way I'm going to teach it, we must not limit home economics the way it once was limited to those of a female persuasion. Now we all can study home economics. I will appoint Commissioner Daniel Rakowitz as the chairman of the Home Economics Board of Education. He's very, oh yes, he, he is very handy in the kitchen. He certainly is. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Mayor, who is your choice for uh, science commissioner? I have chosen for Board of Education science commissioner one of the most distinguished scientists, pioneering scientists in all of history. That is history, but not Western history, which we must eschew. I don't want you to chew nothing. I just want you to say something. I will, Reverend Sharp, and I really will. I have appointed Leonard Jeffries as the chairman of the, the uh, science seat on the Board of Education. Now you're talking. Uh, glad you approve, Reverend Sharpton. And, uh, but tell me something, Mr. Mayor. You know, we've heard that you wanted to institute a uh, policy of teaching parenting in the schools. You wanted to actually teach uh, individuals in our schools how to be parents. Well, that is true, Jay. Since so many of, of our students are parents themselves, I think it's only appropriate that we teach them how to be proper parents, and therefore I'm appointing Woody Allen and Mia Farrow to the Board of Education so that they can teach other individuals how to 
raise their children. Very interesting. Well, I want to thank you for coming in here, uh, Mr. Mayor, to describe your uh, newly constituted uh, Board of Education. Uh, I haven't finished yet. Oh, all right, I'm sorry. One ought not to interrupt the mayor, even if one finds him lacking in certain areas. Yeah, but you know, it's not true. Let me tell you, I'm going to get a lot of calls later that I'm just kidding around with you because I'm a racist. Jay, I certify that you are not a racist. In fact, you are the least racist person that ever lived. I wish that I were not a racist the way you are not a racist. Are you saying you're a racist? No, I'm just saying that I admire your ability to not be a racist, which is different than my being a racist. Well, I don't think you're a racist. Well, I don't think you're a racist. Well, I know you're not a racist. Well, I know you're not a racist. Gee, we sound like we like each other. All right, well, Mr. Mayor, what's the final selection? Well, Jay, as chairman of the math seat on the Board of Education, I appoint myself. I will teach children that the, I will teach the income tax course and the stock transfer course to all the students in our city, and I assure you that will put a lot of more money in their pocket rather than in the government's pocket. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Jay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back on WABC. And, uh, but I would like to know, Jay, who were the groups, who were the people that were exploiting them? They didn't announce that on the news. I would like to know. Uh, was it another Asian group? And the reason I'd like to know, Jay, is because uh, white people and America are always accused of exploiting third world peoples. <laughs> and well, a couple of years ago, there was a story of uh, Chinese uh, people involved in the black market sneaking Chinese immigrants, illegal aliens, into the United States. And when they got here, they would exploit more money out of the families who were already here. And they would tie some of these immigrants to bedposts in these uh, uh, slimy uh, hotel rooms until the families came through with the extra money. And it's always white people in America that are accused of exploiting third world people. These, these are examples of other third world people exploiting third worlders. Yeah, but can I make a point, John? These Chinese immigrants, they were willing to be cooped up that way. They were willing to risk their lives to get in a boat in communist China and come here. Mm -hmm. And uh, believe me, uh, how come, uh, how come they, they didn't uh, want to eschew this land of oppression? Right, this racist yeah, country. Yeah, you know why? Because they know a simple and very profound truth. They know, as everybody overseas knows, that if you come here, no matter how humble your beginnings, and these guys were willing to accept humble beginnings 60 in a room as prisoners just for the chance to be let loose in America where they know that they are not restricted in what they can achieve so long as they have the desire and the ability to achieve something. That's right. That's something that the jerks here who are always complaining and threatening, they, they don't understand that. That you can achieve whatever you want here in America, nobody will rope you in. You can do what you want to do if you have a vision, a commitment, and some slight ability. And when you confront a lot of these radicals about the, them being free to leave this country and going back to their, quote, roots, they'll say to you, the excuse is because they know they really don't want to leave here and they're just uh, posturing and they're full of hot air. They'll say to you, well, uh, my country has been so exploited by the white man in America that it doesn't pay to go back there now. See, this is their excuse so that they can stay here and not lose face. They're all full of it. Thank you, John. Thank you. On WABC. You know, darling, I... Beautiful. Thanks, John. That's when you're at uh, your hottest and you're the angriest. And that's when you're at your best. And Jay, uh, I, you know, I don't know why everyone's so upset at what's going on in Prospect Park. After all, that's, uh, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Prospect Park falls under David Dinkins' Safe City, Safe Streets program. <laughs> and uh, don't you know that according to David Dinkins, crime is down? This is all our imagination. And let me interrupt you, John, just to say this, that when I learned of Alan Winslow's murder, I also learned that there's been a spate of rapes in Prospect Park. In the last two days, there's been two rapes, but they hadn't been reported until Winslow was murdered. Huh. Then they were reported. The mayor wrote them and gave them this extra protection. He went there to go in the park to enjoy the new protection. Until you go in the park and he removes the protection in two or three weeks, and then there are more murders and more... Ra Imagine rapes in Prospect Park. In daylight. 
Yeah. And it's amazing. I had this guy, Kelly, spotted uh, the first time I saw him standing scared next to David Dinkins, so afraid to upset him and say the wrong thing. I know we had another wimp on our hands. And I wonder if the man who would be king, who uses a white safari bearer to carry his coat so he can look good as mayor because he's unable to act like one, I wonder if he's going to say, this murder occurred because of a lack of jobs and services a la Yanka Rosenbaum. Or when he's interviewed, will he say, uh, we don't condone this activity, but there's reasons for it. Listen, Jay, listen very carefully in the next few days to David Dinkins' verbiage. If these are bushwhackers, turn out to be black. Dinkins will, uh, he'll say something in an attempt to condemn it, but then he'll throw in a supplemental remark to take some of the onus off the black thugs. Twelve years of Reagan Bush. <laughs> That's one of them. But if you recall after the Bensonhurst trial... I, I just want to say something. I hope to God David Dinkins is still around in the year, let me figure out the year, uh, 2008. You know why? I want to hear him cry about 12 years of Buchanan Kemp. <laughs> I, I can, I'm now older, but I can still decry 12 years of Buchanan Kemp. <laughs> Let's hope he's out of office long enough so that he, does, he is of no significance. But if you recall, Jay, after the Bensonhurst trial, when uh, those black anarchists demonstrated and beat up the uh, reporters and destroyed their equipment because they didn't like the verdict. Well, that's when he called, that's when Sharpton referred to Carol Zimmer as, a, right. as a white bitch. That's right. He said that kind of activity will not be tolerated, but he couldn't leave it at that. He had to add the protectionist statement no matter how justified your <laughs> anger may yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, And for those who think race isn't everything to David Dinkins, Jay, you don't have to point to the major racial events in this administration like Crown Heights and the Korean Delhi to prove his one-sidedness. Look at some of the subtle actions of David Dinkins that give him away. When a poll about a year ago showed that uh, even 54% of blacks were unhappy with Dinkins' performance, he couldn't claim racism there, so he accused the press of racism for reporting the bad news. He declared a day for Yusef Hawkins, but none for Brian Watkins or Yonko Rosenbaum. And he wanted to spend $2 million to change the uniforms of the Department uh, of Traffic thugs, half of whom look like they're in between prison terms themselves. He wanted to change their uniforms from brown to blue because he thought there was something racial in the term brownie. And he also wanted to spend $300,000 to find the vandals of a mural of Fidel Castro and Daniel Ortega on the Upper West Side. The, uh, the vandals of, of a mural of, of Castro and Ortega? That's right. All men of the revolution, it, right. fine warriors of the revolution, soldiers in the fight for proletarian justice as I am. <laughs> They're fighting the war of liberation. It doesn't surprise me because two weeks ago he attended a, a memorial for that communist skunk Oliver Tambo and he threw a $2 million parade for another communist, Nelson Mandela. And he also referred to the police demonstration at City Hall as a full-fledged riot, but he called Crown Heights a disturbance. This guy, <laughs> Jay, I'd like to grab him by the scruff of the collar and the seat of the pants and throw him in the trash bag of history. You just did. Thank you. Thank you. For example, Nylon. Well, thank you. Jay, we must get beyond Crown Heights. <laughs> we must start the healing process. <laughs> when blacks are caught in the act, but when a white is the victor in a confrontation with a, ba a black, the battle cry is, we'll burn this city down. Remember that one? And no justice, no peace. You know, Jay, it shouldn't surprise us that David Dinkins wouldn't have the, uh, the butt-kicking from the gut reaction of a patriotic American and would be more concerned with uh, the feelings of other Muslims first because he's neither patriotic nor does he consider this his country. You heard him when he went to Africa. I'm finally home. I heard him when he wouldn't go to Ellis Island. I was just going to mention that. Yeah, he, he didn't mind condemning all white Europeans when he refused to speak at the reopening of Ellis Island, saying he wanted nothing to do with those European immigrants. And if a, Jay, can you imagine if a group of whites plotted to blow up the Apollo Theater? Can you picture Mayor Wire saying, let us be careful about condemning all white people? He would have made some uh, Dinkinese pronouncement like, 
This is indicative of the systemized racism our people have suffered for 400 years. No white would be safe in this town. They're not, they're not safe now. And you must have read my mind when you spoke about the UN. I was thinking that uh, if there's one place one of these butchers could have slipped past the FBI and blown it up, it should have been the UN because they would have blown up half of their accomplices. Well, that's right. It's a magnet for international spying. And it always has been. And it, it has no business here. Do you know the money that we spend uh, from the New York City to protect them with the New York City Police Department? I know. It's been going on for years. The problems they cause with traffic, the tickets their so-called diplomats accrue. Uh, it, it's an idiotic. And for what? What do we get out of it? Trouble. Let them put it where it belongs. Let them put it anywhere where they'll be happy. And so I'm waiting for a certain left-wing commentator on this station to say, I wonder how long it's going to take them to say uh, that the FBI was just lucky. They just got lucky, Long like they did at the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I know what you're saying, John. Uh, all right, John. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Let me go on. Make the tendency in our society for anarchy. We have to maintain civic order. Well, Governor, thank you for coming to the microphones on WABC. Would you like to read us your new law? Jay, I can hardly, I wouldn't even attempt to try to outdo the brilliant law against false, no radio signs that was promulgated by my hero, Mayor Dinkins, but I'm going to try. We have to stifle anarchy. We have to maintain order in the streets, and I propose this new law to do so. Henceforth, a person is guilty of criminal anarchy when A, he or she fails to advocate the re-election by violence or peaceful means of a person of color with the exception of Asian Americans, or B, with knowledge of its contents, he or she publishes, sells, or distributes any document which fails to advocate such re-election, or C, with knowledge of its purpose, he or she becomes a member of any organization which fails to advocate such re-election. Criminal anarchy is a class E felony. We're going to retake, retake the streets. Thank you, Governor. And uh, the mayor is here also to read his new law. Jay, in the aftermath of Crown Heights, I have decided to take firm action to stifle unlawful activity in order to make, in order to stifle unlawful activity Henceforth and forever it shall be lawful when A, simultaneously with ten or more other persons, he or she engages in tumultuous and violent conduct and thereby intentionally causes or creates a grave risk of public alarm, and B, even though in the course of and as a result of such conduct, a person other than one of the participants suffers physical injury or substantial property damage occurs when in the pursuit of the lawful and historically denied rights to minorities. Such conduct shall now and forever be referred to as a parade. The police commissioner of the city of New York shall be empowered to grant parade permits liberally to the appropriate groups. Racial minorities shall exclude members of the Asian American community. Having such parade without a permit shall be considered a violation punishable by a fine of not more than $75. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that sounds as though you're making riots legal. Jay, you know the definition of a politician? When you don't get what you want, change what you want. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, Joe, That's a rant. I just, uh... Wanna leave that. <laughs> Why, the food is the best, whether it's the southern food or the northern food. But ladies and gentlemen, the bottom line is it is all American food. Uh... <laughs> I know because I, I want to go there very soon once again. Or for that matter, I, I don't know why it would be John from Staten Island. He would have to call at just the right time and the, all the stars and the tides would have to be right and there's a hurricane. This is a blue moon, you know. Let's see. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Nick the Nut. It's a pleasure to speak to you, John. I yeah. finally got you face to face. Yeah, well, I don't, you should have tried listening to the whole conversation this morning. You see, Lynn jumps in whenever she thinks you're going to make a good point. She didn't let me finish my point about the Industrial Revolution, which is what really built America. 
That's why the South lost the war. They had no industry, which was in the north of this country where there were mostly white people. So, uh, you know, that takes care of the one argument. And there's nothing wrong with saying that white people built this country. She was saying she always tries to take the credit away from white people because she's a self-hating white and a self-hating Jew. And Nick, I'd like to know what white racism against blacks you're, you're, you would like Rudy Giuliani to do something about. Was it, was it white racism that killed Yonko Rosenbaum and Brian Watkins? Or uh, was it white racism that caused uh, groups of white girls to be attacked on the Upper West Side a couple of years ago by black gangs with, uh, with darts, if you remember that? Yes, I do. I yeah. remember those things. And How come you don't address, is it, is it white racism that uh, keeps whites from traveling on the New York City subways because they're attacked because they are white? You know, John, I'm willing to concede all the episode and incidents that you, that you point out in which uh, white people have been the victim of crime or, or abuse uh, from black people based on, uh, on racial hatred. Uh, which some black people have, have fallen into. I am not denying the, the evil of those, of those abuses. Hey, Nick, will you say something for once instead of all the double talk? Uh, you know what? I think we're back in vaudeville on the uh, Keith circuit, or maybe it's the Orpheum circuit, and Al Kelly is performing. However, I don't think racism is a game that's playing on a tip to tip. You just tweet and everything's five of yours. You're going to do ten of mine. You're, you know, that kind of, uh, of trying to keep score only exacerbates the problem and plays into the hands of the haters and the violent people who would want to see this country fall down. As I said earlier, John, I think what makes this country great is the principles of freedom, democracy, and justice. And the and power to say nothing in 6,000 words. Well, you know, Hitler had a pretty good industrial revolution in Germany. Tojo got Japan's fastest Germany pretty good. I don't think anybody wants Nick, to... Nick, to Nick, 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 John, ease up. Okay. Nick, the industrial revolution doesn't refer to a period of economic prosperity. It refers to a change in the way the world conducted business based on an, an enhancement in the technology uh, in, the late, in the late 19th century. Did you know that, Nick? Well, I know that. Well, it, it doesn't seem that you know that. The Industrial Revolution was a revolution. The world changed. Uh, Western nations changed from an agrarian-oriented economy to an industrial-oriented economy. That's what it refers to. It doesn't refer to a, a five-year period of economic prosperity. One would have made that assumption based on what you said about Hitler getting the engines going. Well, that's why I think John's statement was inaccurate that the industrial revolution that makes this country great. I all right, Nick. I want to Nick. Nick, I want to thank you for all the time you uh, you spent with me tonight. Oh, hold on, hold on, Jay. No, I'll speak to you, John. I've just had enough uh, let, of Nick. Let me suggest one thing in closing. Uh, Jack Newfield wrote a book. Unfortunately, I forgot the title about New York City uh, politics uh, and the corruption. Stop horrific. That that book. In, in Jack Newfield wrote, described the corruption and, and the kickbacks and the whole, the bureaucracy. That budget in New York City could be cut probably by 30 or 40 percent if you eliminate all the waste, inefficiency, and corruption. That's the problem the politicians don't want to deal with, so they're playing all these games, left-wing, right-wing guards. No, 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 Nick. No, that's the problem that has become entrenched because of the, the paramount position of the Democrat Party in the city of New York. Now, with the election of Mr. Giuliani, we will go one step further toward establishing a two-party system here, which in and of itself tends to play down corruption. It tends to inhibit corruption, which is what you get when you have one-party rule. So it has nothing to do with, uh, with uh, anything other than one-party government, which is good to have overturned, and hopefully the election of Mr. Giuliani will will make that happen. For the sake of the city, I hope you're right. Listen, I don't want to take up too much time here, and I Good, then say good night. Good night. Thank you, Nick. Bye-bye. Right. Listen, Nick. Yeah, go ahead, John. He's still listening, even though he's out of the radio. I hope he's got his radio on. What, you know, he can spout all his liberal cliches he wants about freedom and all that other nonsense that uh, liberals love to uh, spout with their insipid cliches. What freedom is he talking about? The people of Arizona practiced their freedom by voting to not to have Martin Luther King Day as a national holiday. And what happened to them? They were pounced upon, and the Super Bowl was Nick, taken away from them. You know, Nick's not a bad guy, John. He's just suffering from a terminal case of political rectitude. All, all pandering liberal white lackeys are bad people because they, they're destroying their own race. <laughs> John, you're... Nick is, a, Nick is a danger to this country. He's an apologist for blacks. And he...
He talks about crime and trying to even the score, showing his uh, even-handedness. Hey, don't talk to me about that stuff, Jay. Young blacks between the ages of 15 and 24, which make up 1% of the population, are responsible for 19% of the murders in this country. No, but somebody, I know you, I, I know you better than most people who listen to you on the radio. And, and you are, you sound sometimes when you get off on a riff, as though you, you have it in for people just because, that you hate the color of black skin. And I know that that's not true. And I think sometimes when you, when you become immersed in your discussion, when you catch the rhythm, and you, you take off, when you, catch a, when you catch a wind in your sail, you go off with it, and, and sometimes you maybe speak without really realizing what you're saying. I have spoken to you off the air, and I know that you do not have a hatred for black skin, but sometimes you sound as though you do. And then the very credible and valid arguments that you make are diminished when people think that you're speaking only out of racial prejudice rather than from a political point of view. Well, Jay, when I express my political opinions, I do not dare show any weakness to the point. Well, I don't think I don't there. I don't I don't think that it's necessarily showing weakness to recognize that that people some people who are black are not criminals. I don't think that's weak. But I don't. Th in other words, I don't think it's weak to tell the truth. I, I don't. I don't think it's weak to admit that two and two is four, but they or that the sun comes up every day. Hold on, Jay. They do not accept the, the black radicals, which m number in the millions in this country, as far as I'm concerned, they do not accept the truth. And so the only other thing that they understand is when you face them down no, no, I understand with as that. much John, viciousness as they express. John, John, I'm, I'm not talking. You, you just said black and then the qualifier radicals. And I would agree with you. But did you see the hearings at the Board of Education tonight on New York One? Yeah, and they're all, they're all did considered... You, did you see the procession of blacks who came to speak in support of Mary Cummins and Ramon Cortinas? Yeah, but that, look, Jay, that, that doesn't make any difference. When it comes to people's children, everyone is a conservative. That's, that's not a, true. That's no, that, John, John, that's just simply not factual. There were, there were two elements in the black community there. There were the hater, haters like Sonny Carson and G2LUC, and there were decent black educators and parents and, and, and community members like Michael Mills, uh, Karen McGregor, and the people whose names I cannot remember, but a procession of people who, whose politics are more akin to yours. And, and if they were to hear you now, they would say, my God, this guy has it in for everybody who's black. And I know that you don't. Or maybe you've changed and now you do. No, I don't know. You said the magic word. They are parents. And as I said, when people are sticking up for their children, everyone becomes a conservative. I want to hear those same blacks speak up for conservatism as a philosophy and get rid of the black radicals who are in office. Let them start speaking out and voting the right way instead of for a candidate who are just the same color as they are and let them stop expressing their hatred for all for all white people and get the chip right. off their shoulder. All right, thanks for the call. Thank you. On W. Explain why I think you're the best uh, talk show host on the, on the air. Uh, also want to get your input That on is an indication of my being tougher on crime that they want to be in Oklahoma where they want to execute him. I want to put him in prison for 20 years. Y-E-A-H-Z. Don't forget, Jay, when they execute him, if they were to execute him in Oklahoma, that punishment, as it were, would only be lasting for one minute. Most tops, it takes two minutes to fry. Whereas I will keep him in jail with air conditioning, with color television, with weightlifting, with telephone calls, with conjugal visits from pretty girls in the community, townies, with those kind of, those kind of privilege, I will keep him going for 20 years that way, torturing him. But he'll never be able to get out unless we reduce the sentence or I give him amnesty, which is a possibility, even though I resisted it in the case of that brutal murderous Gene Harris. Uh, Governor, you believe that you are being tougher on crime by keeping him in jail for 20 years than executing him. And what is the rationale? Because an execution is merely punishment for tops 200 seconds. And I want him in jail for 20 years. And besides, we have to analyze the root causes of crime. You're, the root causes of crime. The root causes of crime, Jay, are, are uh, white males, uh, heterosexual white males. 
They are the bearer of the evil genes in our culture, in our society, heterosexual white males, their aggressive, rapacious business practices uh, uh, go along with the, the cultural aggression that they practice. And they are the people who depress the other people in our society, who render despair on our society. They are the people who inhibit the self-esteem of all the other members of society, uh, uh, with the exception of Asian Americans, who also must be re-indoctrinated as to their rapacious business practices. In fact, I think what we have to have is, instead of affirmative actions for Asians, we have to have nugative action, uh, nugatory action. Nugatory action would mean that uh, Asians' business tax should be 50% higher than the business tax for all others with the exclusion of heterosexual white males. Uh, Asians should have to pay higher personal income taxes than the other oppressed groups because the Asians share with the heterosexual white males the tendency to practice rapacious, successful, I mean rapacious business practices. How else can we uh, astor, restore amity and justice to our political environment, Mr. Governor? Jay, what we have to do, in the case of Mayor Dinkins, the president was right. He was widely criticized for making the comment that vicious racist whites sometimes will refuse to vote for David Dinkins. And we all know there's no other reason to vote against David Dinkins than racism. Rank, vicious racism is the only reason anybody would vote against David Dinkins. And the reason to vote for him, Mr. Governor? The, the record speaks for itself. But the fact of the matter is, we have to, we have to do something to, to, uh, to militate against the tendency of all these vicious white people to vote against David Dinkins for racist reasons. And that's why I want to establish an electoral handicap, much the same way that golfers, golfers have handicaps. So for, before this election, I'm proposing a bill to give David Dinkins 100,000 extra votes. So when the uh, vote count starts on Tuesday night, November 2, David Dinkins will start with 100,000 votes, and Giuliani will start with zero votes. And in that way, we'll make it fairness, because the Democrats are in favor of fairness. And to, to uh, accommodate the impulses of the vicious heterosexual white males with their Asian-American lackeys, we are going to start off the election giving David Dinkins 100,000 votes. When you turn on Chuck Scarborough, or Chuck and Sue, or whomever, you, Ernie Anastas, or Trish, whoever she is, uh, Michelle, wherever, whatever, and uh, Jim Jensen, you're going to see uh, Dinkins, 100,000, Julie Hymiani, uh, want nothing, zero. Uh, in addition, uh, I believe that we have to prevent Staten Island from seceding, and I have a way to do this. I have to tell you something, Jay. It's not enough to save Thomas Grasso. It simply isn't enough to save Thomas Grasso. How are we going to compensate all the other murderers down through history who have been executed by an unjust society, by a vicious society dominated by a Eurocentric heterosexual white males with their Asian lackeys who have been deliberately putting criminals to death for no more reason than the fact that they committed murders ever since time began in this horrible country. And so I have decided to take a page from Bill Clinton's book, which is a, a merging of the interests of technology and government. Recently, the president made a pact with the big three automakers to work together. I want to make a pact between New York State's government and the uh, genetic laboratory, Genentech, and all the other uh, laboratories working on gene splicing. I want to formulate a uh, procedure whereby we can clone the remains of all the murderers that have been put to death and bring them back to life. Give them back to life that a vicious heterosexual white male power structure deprived them of. Are you telling me, Mr. Governor, that, that you want to clone the remains of every criminal who's ever been executed and bring them back? Bring them back and pay them reparation of their right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of rape and murder. You certainly are tough on crime. In addition, this new technology will be used to spread fairness throughout our political system. And we will also clone Mayor Dinkins. And we'll, we'll allow the, every city in the United States to have the privilege and the joy of having Mayor Dinkins. Just imagine it. We'll clone Dinkins while he's still alive. And at the same time, simultaneously, he can be mayor of New York, Philadelphia, Boston, Houston, Dallas, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, etc., etc., etc. Imagine it. 94 David Dinkins.
Yes, I will imagine it on WABC. What if you had a riding for yourself to be yourself to be cloned? Yes, Jay, I will gladly give a cutting of my ribs and a liter of my blood so that I can truly be mayor of all the people in all places in the United States. I will be a Dinkins for Houston. I'll be a Dinkins for San Francisco, a, Stink, a Dinkins for Los Angeles, a Dinkins for San Diego, moving east, a Dinkins for Chicago, a Dinkins for Idaho, a Dinkins for New Jersey. Just imagine, I can be mayor of Trenton, I can be mayor of Newark, I can be mayor of Jersey City, I can be mayor of Philadelphia, I had Dinkins in every city. You've heard of a chicken in every pot. I can be, I can be a Dinkins in every town. What a selfless man you are, Mr. Mayor, just giving of yourself that in that fashion. You are truly a dedicated public servant. That's what I've been trying to tell you all the time. I do have my faults, however. I'm far too loyal, far too loyal to my subordinates. If they do anything wrong, if they perform malfeasance in office or fix contracts, or if they cultivate criminals, or if they insult my opponents merely because they differ with my views and my political aspirations, I tolerate them because I am loyal to a fault. Not loyal to the people I was elected to serve, but loyal to my cronies and stooges and fellow political hacks. That is controversial, yes. and that's what ABC is about. Yeah, well then, how come controversy we, how come, brings how in come, the almighty yeah. buck? How come we didn't try? I don't think that you believe. Talk. I don't think that yeah. you believe well, a yeah, word yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, 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 George Bush and Ronald Reagan, yeah, gee, they if, made the rich richer no, and the, the poor poorer. If the bottom line was... And, and Bill Clinton yeah. and Hopeless. Hillary, whom yeah. both of you hey, taunt listen. and destroy, yeah. they're trying to get a help hey, look, for the Jack, people. Well, do me a favor. A, which is an go, go to some other radio show. You're, you're bad from, from my demographics. That was... Uh, yeah, you uh, old piece of shit. Ronald Reagan you're, you're created. Yeah, 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 yeah. All you can do is taunt me. Yeah. But Valerie, no, she no, was no, talking. genius. Logically, I'm trying to talk you to you, but you don't. To back you off. don't. You don't want to let me talk. Even, you to can't him. cope with people. Yeah. You yeah. you dissemble and lie. Not you personally, but Bob Grant and yeah, G. Gordon yeah, Liddy. Yeah, all he yeah. does. All he does. Hey, listen, why don't they take you off life support? Life support. And I thank pulled God, a plug on you. Thank yeah. God the American yeah. Civil Liberty yeah, Union. Yeah, yeah. Now can I ask you a question? Certainly. Certainly. Uh, do you think it was a little bit rude of you not to let me talk at all when you were making your shrill speech? First of all, you're insulting me. Yeah. Uh, all right, but no, I, no, I, 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 you were up. just as emotional. Put him down. Put him down. You were just... Put this old fart down. Listen. Listen to me. Uh, shale ball, which is what you are, a big stinking shale ball. Uh, let me point something out to you. If the bottom line is con to create controversies, to stir contention for the purpose of making money, genius, why didn't, why didn't Bob Grant do it to when George Bush was president and say how much he hated George Bush? Now, let's see if he's still there to answer. Go ahead. I don't hate any politician. He doesn't listen. He won't answer. I don't hate any politician. Listen to me. I'm trying to ask you a question. Because politics is a part of America. Listen to him. You don't, don't understand. Put him that. down again. Put him down. Put him down. The question is, if, as you say, the bottom line is, is merely to create controversy. If you're, you're alleging that I have no real political beliefs, that I'm speaking against my true nature, and that Bob speaks against his, his true heart, if that is true, why didn't either I or Bob uh, fulminate against George Bush to the extent that he does and I do against this man if the bottom line was just to have disrespect for a president for purposes of stirring up controversy? Answer that question. Dare you say disrespect? Trying to be... All right. Uh, you know, I shouldn't make fun of the dead. I shouldn't speak ill of the dead, so I won't say anything about Jack. Jack sounds like a stereotype invented by Spike Lee and uh, spouted by Sonny Carson. And you know something? When I, listen to, when I listen to Jack, I'm thinking maybe Spike Lee and Sonny Carson and Sharpton are right the way they feel. This station, that I am going to be this on this hour. And so I want all those who object to my being this to call up and diss the host who's doing the dissing. That's right. 
Well, Mr. Mayor, I'm giving you ample opportunity to defend yourself. That's all right. You're just like Ed Koch. You're just like Ed Koch. You're bitter because this poor boy from Harlem. I thought you were from Trenton, Mr. Mayor. Yes, but I'm by Harlem by way of Trenton. You don't mean Trenton State, do you? No, that's one of my reporters, the very right Reverend Herbert Daughtry. Isn't it Daughtry? Well, Daughtry, whatever it is. We used to call him uh, number 124719. Well, that was his number in the, in the journal. D block. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, it seems that you're taking my potential dissing very well. What do I care if you diss me? For every diss, each of my voters will vote for me 14 times. You mean to say people vote for you more than once? Why, of course they do. They vote for me once in each place they vote. They merely go to 14 different places. That's legal, isn't it? What's it? No, that's not legal. You're only allowed to vote one time in one place. Now, wait a minute. Let me see if I understand this. You mean to say that one can only vote one time in one polling place? That is correct. But one cannot go to 14, say, different polling places. No, Mr. Mayor, one ought not do that. Now, uh, wait a minute. That's the way I speak. I say one ought not do what one ought not do. Ah, come on, Mr. Mayor. You accused Ed Koch of... Uh, of endorsing Rudolph Giuliani because he was embittered that a, a kid from Harlem beat him. Weren't you trying to play the race card? Weren't you trying to provoke racial division? How can I be, how can I be provoking racial division when I am a healer of race? No, you're just a heel. Well, my heels are handcrafted in England by the Peel Shoe Company. That's Peel, as in heel. Handmade heel. All my footwear is handmade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you dress very well. But why is it that, the, that you can throw a horseshoe between your shirt collar and your coat collar? Have you noticed that, too? I'm going to have to speak to my tailor about that. Yeah, I noticed there's a lot of daylight between the collar of your shirt and the collar of your jacket. You're paying to have those clothes made to order by a tailor. You think you have a good one. Yes, but I have a Chinese tailor. A Chinese tailor? What's the matter? Don't you patronize the uh, multicultural curriculum? No, I believe in excellence in clothing. Excellence in clothing? How come you don't believe in fairness in clothing? You believe in fairness in everything else? That's true, but when it comes to clothing, I must have everything made just so. Oh, you mean to say if there were, if there were four tailors, and one tailor was great, and the other tailors were just so-so, you would want to go to the great tailor? Of course, because my clothing is paramount. Remember, the apparel off makes the man. Well, what about, I don't think that's fair. That's not practicing fairness. Fairness, Mr. Mayor. Why do you stress the last syllable? Nah, it's just how I learned to speak from doing a talk show. From the callers. Well, they must know what they're doing. Yes, yes, Mr. Mayor, I know that. But you mean if there were four tailors and one was discernibly better than the others, you'd want the best one. Of course. Even though there's a, you could throw a horseshoe between my shirt collar and my jacket collar. Well, then, uh, why can't you understand, for example, if there, are, if there are four accountants and a company wants to hire the best one, why can't you understand that about the company? Why would you make the company hire uh, an, accountant of, of, uh, an accountant of color or an Asian-American accountant or whatever other hyphenated American accountant? Why do you want to impose the, uh, your will and your concept of fairness on accountants, but not fairness with tailors. Well, when it comes to myself, it's different. I'm naturally fair. I don't need a law to make me fair. Besides, I want the best. Well, maybe the accounting company wants the best. Well, I decide what's best for the accounting company by virtue of my ability to form a mob and intimidate the accounting company. Now, a group of citizens wants a march on Gracie Mansion because I don't use the right tailor. They're welcome to. You know something, Mr. Mayor? You're a true egalitarian Democrat. I respect you, Mr. Mayor. No, you don't. You diss me. Well, yes, that's true. I do diss you. And I'm going to continue to diss you. What about if your callers don't like it? That's just too damn bad. On WABC. Who is it? Moment of healing. Let the healing process begin now, Paul. Please. Join me in a moment 
join me in a moment of compassion for Shaquem Major. Let us now bestow my my mayoral compassion on Shaquem. Shaquem, I am compassionate of you. We need the Reverend Jackson. Can you feel the compassionate (laughs) rays flowing into you, Shaquem? Uh, Yes, Shaquem. You're making me sicker than I already am. Wait a minute now. (laughs) <laughs> you must share my compassion for Shaquem Paul, for he was compelled to commit the murder last night. He Uh-oh. murdered Juan de Betts because a, an obdurately oppressive society Always. compelled him to do that. Always. He was born and I must, to it. I must, oh, I must be compassionate now. And with my compassion, you will be healed, Shaquem. And now that I see you are miraculously healed, there is no need to detain you or to put you, make you suffer the indignity of a trial before this oppressive court. So go now, and God be with you. Excuse me, Shaquem Allah be with you. <laughs> That's tremendous, Jay. <laughs> I just, uh, 